What's up guys, Asian here again with another build video and today we're going to be going over the Stamina Sorcerer. So Stam Sork is one of those Stamina classes that have really been not really been getting any love from Zoss uh, recently. However, with Elsewhere, there has been a change with how Flurry works, uh, I should say how, with how much damage Flurry does. Um, and so now Stam Sorks have actually gotten a bit of a buff, although not a direct buff, more of an indirect buff due to buffs to other skills not in their class tool set here. Uh, so Stam Sorks are one of the few classes, if not the only class, that is able to make full use of the Maelstrom uh, front bar set here. Uh, so we'll be going over that build today. So just like the rest of our build videos, we'll be going over gear, skills, attributes, everything you need to know to basically recreate this build yourself. We'll discuss our rotation a little bit on a 6 million dummy, and then we'll do a 21 million raid dummy parse so you guys can get a point of comparison between the other stamina DPS builds that I have on this channel here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here first with our gear. Um, so off. I think I'm wearing Lucasis rather than Maelstrom, uh, but uh, in terms of gear, you basically have a few options here, but this is going to be the best option for you. We have five piece perfect Lucasis, so we have the helmet here, helmet and shoulders, and then we have the jewelry, then we have five piece reliquent. Because we are using Maelstrom daggers on our front bar, whatever two five piece sets that you choose can pretty much be wherever you'd like them to be. So you can uh, Run the Kestis anywhere, you can run Reliquin anywhere, as long as you have those two sets somewhere in your body sets here. Now, we are running 7 medium, so we have all medium, and we have 1 health enchant on a small piece here, because we do need to use regen food, uh, so we do need to have that max health bonus here, in order to make up for the loss in health due to the food nerfs with regen food. All of our pieces are divines though, and again, everything else is max stamina enchants. For Jewelry, 3 Bloodthirsty with 3 Weapon Damage Enchants, you can also go with Infused as a Jewelry trait if you'd like. If you don't have access to Jewelry Crafting, then you will have to stick with the Robust instead. Now, I do want to point out here that in terms of Perfected versus Imperfect versions, it doesn't really matter too much which set you decide to go for. Um, for Stamina, at least, Perfected versus Imperfect is not as big of a DPS loss compared to on Magic DPS. So for Reliquin, you can go with Perfect Version, which comes from Cloud Rest plus 1, 2, or 3 on Vet. Or you can go with the Normal Version, which dropped from the Side Bosses or any of the normal Cloud Rest configurations. Now, Perfect Locustes comes from Veteran Sunspire. You can get this from just Normal Vet. You don't need to do Hard Modes at all. And I do recommend trying to get Perfected if you can. Uh, if you can't, then the Imperfect Version is fine. You just lose the additional Weapon Crit on the 5-piece bonus there. Now you do have some other sets that you might want to consider running and we'll go over those in a little bit here. For our front bar we have the Maelstrom Dagger. So you do need to complete Maelstrom Arena on Veteran in order to get this set. Um, you might need to farm it quite a bit here uh, just because there is RNG involved when it comes to the drops from the Maelstrom Arena. You do need to have access to the Orsinium DLC in order to do the Maelstrom Arena. So if you don't have the Orsinium DLC then you will need to do a different build which I will show you guys in a little bit here. And for our back bar, the Maelstrom Bow with an infused weapon damage enchant here. Now for our front bar, it doesn't really matter what enchant you have. We're going with double sharpened here. You can also go with Nern on the main hand, sharpened on the offhand. But you will be running double Ravage Health Poisons. So they did fix the bug where your poisons were affecting your back bar enchant. So now we can use these poisons uh, fully without any regard uh, really to our back bar enchant at all. Uh, so these are going to give us the best DPS overall. Now, I did mention earlier that if you don't have the Maelstrom Daggers or if you don't have the Orsidium DLC, you will have to use a different bar setup. So, keeping with the Lacestes Reliquin theme here, we'd just basically be using Veldreth as our monster helm set, and then we'd be using Lacestes Daggers instead. Same idea here, double sharpened or nern sharpened, it's up to you. It just, uh, basically, the difference there is basically how you distribute your CPs. But for this parse, this build, we'll be going with 5 Lacestes, 5 Reliquin, and Maelstrom setup here. Now, you do have a few other sets that you might want to consider picking up uh, and holding on to uh, just in case uh, you're either farming for a Reliquin uh, or you are farming for the Kestis or you don't have access to get Reliquin or the Kestis. The first set I want to mention here is going to be Strength of the Automaton. So this is the base game set from Dark Jade Caverns. Uh, pretty nice synergy with Stam Sorks because all of our damage, or I should say most of our damage is physical uh, damage. So we get some nice bonus from that five piece there can also go with Leviathan. This is another dungeon set from Crypt of Hearts base game, so you do, uh, don't need to worry about getting any DLCs. 
gives you a lot of weapon crit. And again, because we are running the Maelstrom Daggers on the front bar here, don't need to really worry where the Leviathan is going. But if you do not have the Maelstrom Daggers and you're running a five-piece set on the front bar, you want to try to maintain the Leviathan on the body set because the five-piece bonus is static. Same thing goes with Strength of Automaton because it is a, five, a static five-piece bonus. Make sure to keep this on your body set rather than your front bar set here. Uh, other sets you might want to consider running. Uh, Sogman's Warband is a really nice set as well. This comes from Frost Vault, so you do need to have access uh, to the Rastone DLC in order to get this set here. Um, so this is basically a slightly weaker version of Advancing Yokeda, but it also provides Mind of Force, which frees up one ability slot for you to use. Um, so overall, the trade-off is pretty nice here. Um, it's also easier to maintain an Advanced Yokeda because the stacks do last for 10 seconds rather than 6 seconds with Advanced Yokeda. So a little bit of an easier time to maintain it, especially because we do need to use Dark Deal, which does have a cast time associated with it. So a little bit easier to maintain Sogvins compared to Advancing Yokeda. Other sets, um, find them all. So under the Overland sets, there are a few Overland sets that you might want to consider holding on to. Spriggan's Thorns, this is an overland set from Bankurai, so base game set. This is mostly used for trash bowls because of that physical penetration, uh, although some raiders will use Twice Fang Snake instead. Uh, but Spriggan's, very similar to Strength of Automaton, and Leviathan will be a body set because that five piece is a static bonus here. Uh, and then from there, there are, really aren't that many other good um, overland sets for you to use. Briar Heart is probably the only in the set that you might want to consider picking up. This is an overland set from Rothgar, so you either can farm it if you have access to the zone, or you can buy it off of Guild Traders. Now this can be either a body or a front bar set, because it is a proc bonus there. Um, so it really depends on whether you want to get, uh, you, or it basically depends on your second set choice. So for example, if you're running Leviathan with Briarheart, then Briarheart would be your front bar set. But if you're running something like Reliquin and Briarheart, then Briarheart should be your front bar set instead. Uh, I should say it should be your front bar set uh, with Reliquin, but if you're wearing something like Lacestis instead, you might be running Lacestis front bar and Briarheart on the body. And finally, there are a few uh, tr medium trial sets that you might also want to consider picking up here. Um, so the first one is going to be Vicious Ophidian or Vicious Serpent. This is a comes from any of the three Craglone trials, so this is a base game set. This gives you a good amount of additional sustain here, it reduces the cost of your stamina abilities by 8%. So this is going to be a body set. It's best served on the body, but you can put it on the weapons if you'd like. Um, it's kind of up to you if you want to do that. I personally prefer keeping it on the body uh, there. And then finally, uh, probably out here somewhere, uh, you have Two Fang Snake. Uh, so this is a, a meter warmer set from Sanctum Ophidia. So again, another base game set and very similar to Spriggan's. This is mostly used in trash pulls for the additional uh, physical penetration. You're not really going to be using it all too often in bosses. You're going to typically speaking going to getting penetration from CPs, Sharpened, and your debuffs. So uh, you're not really going to be seeing Twice Fang Snake to use all too often in single target fights. This is more for trash pulls. Uh, we already talked about a Mosh Helm set that you're going to want to wear Velvet Dress. So this comes from um, Cradle of Shadows. So you do have access to the Shadows of the Hiss DLC. In order to grab this set, uh, this is going to be the strongest Mosh Helm set to use. Uh, but you can also run instead. Uh, you can run Stormfist instead, which is a base game set. Um, so this comes from Veteran Tempest Island. It's going to be a little bit weaker than Velvet Dress because that one piece is stamina regen. So you get basically trading off weapon damage for additional and the proc itself is a little bit weaker compared to Veldreth's. Um, bosses can basically move out of it. It doesn't do quite as much damage as the Veldreth proc, and the Veldreth proc can hit multiple times, so if you're up against the boss with a very large hitbox, more than one of those spores can hit the boss. So Stormfist does end up losing out uh, in overall DPS compared to Veldreth's. Going over our character sheet now. So I am a Dark Elf, so the two races that are going to be the best options for stamina DPS are going to be the Orcs or the Dark Elves. Orcs get 2,000 max stamina and 1,000 max health, and they get 258 weapon damage. So one of the advantages of running an Orc is you might not necessarily need to run a health enchant to use regen food. Dark Elves, on the other hand, get 1875 max stamina and 258 additional weapon damage, so they don't get any max health, so for that reason, you do need to run a health enchant in order to get up to an acceptable level of health once we have Toughness and Ebon. So once we uh, hit the target dummy, the raid dummy, you will see how much health we have with Toughness, and then we just add on additional 1.4k, 1.5k uh, to account for Ebon. 
Um, but again, if you're an orc, you get a thousand additional max health before that's affected by any of your CPs and other passives, but actually ends up working out closer to around 13 uh, to 1400 max health. So if we were an orc right now, we would actually be sitting at around uh, 16.5k max health before that health enchant. Um, if uh, I should say with the health enchant, without the health enchant, we'd be sitting closer to about 16.2k or so. Which is pretty good, especially when you consider we get some additional health from my toughness and ebon. For attributes, 64 points into stamina. Uh, you can put a few points in health if you want. It's kind of up to you if you want to put a few points in the health or not. Um, it really depends on your overall race. So if you're a Dark Elf, for instance, you might want to put a few points into health and just forego that health enchant. So it's really dependent on where you want to get your max health from. Then uh, for Mundus, still going with the Shadow, still very strong, especially in stamina and DPS because we have very good crit chance. Then for food, we're running Artem Takeway Broth, which is the regen food. Uh, so this was nerfed a little bit here um, in elsewhere. So you can see here, it's going to be a little bit lower max health and max stamina, a little bit better stamina regen. Um, so, but we need the additional regen for stamina DPS. So we can't really run by stat here. It's just not really sufficient uh, to sustain without the additional regen from our Tam Thickway Broth or Doobie Morn Throne. Then I am a vampire for the additional 10% stamina regen. You don't need to be a vampire because you are within melee range, so you have less time to react to any sort of mechanics that might kill you. Um, but it is nice to have the additional regen as a stage 2 vampire. Um, before we move on, I do want to touch upon a few races that you might want to consider running uh, instead if you don't want to be an orc or a dark elf. So in terms of sustained classes, you have the red guards or the wood elves, the Bosmer. So both races get 2000 max stamina. Red guards return stamina on direct damage hits, or I, should, I believe it's direct damage hits, versus Bosmer, which just have a flat 258 additional stamina regen. Now both of these classes do lose out on additional weapon damage that Dark Elves and Orcs have, but in return, they get much better sustain. So it's basically a trade-off, damage versus sustain. Then you also have the Imperials, which get 2000 max health and 2000 max stamina, so you don't have to worry about health, don't have to worry about max stamina, but you don't get any additional uh, weapon damage bonus. You do get 333 additional resources back every, I believe it's every 5 seconds when you deal uh, direct damage. So you do have a little bit of sustain, but not nearly as much compared to the Bosmer or the Red Guards. Finally, if you want to jack of all trades, you can go with Khajiits. You just get 825 magicka health and stamina, 85 magicka regen and stamina regen, 100 health regen, and they get 10% additional critical healing done and critical damage done. So a very nice hybrid race there with the Khajiits. Moving on to our skill bars. Starting off with our front bar, we have Rending Slashes, Rapid Strikes, Hurricane, Rearming Trap, Bound Armaments, and Flawless Dawnbreaker. For our back bar, we have Razor Caltrops, Poison Injection, Endless Hail, Dark Deal, Bound Armaments again, and Greater Storm Atronach. You can also run Ballista if you'd like, but Greater Storm Atronach is going to be a little bit better for group DPS because of that Major Berserk Synergy uh, Charged Lightning. Now for our CP point distribution, the CP cap is still 810, so that gives us 270 points to put across our different constellation colors. For our green CPs, 100 into moon cap and 75 into nasty is what I have, which leaves 95 points. And then I have 31 Shadow War, 31 Tumbling, and 33 Warlord. You can play around a little bit with your um, CP points here. So you can put 100 into Nasty if you'd like. You can put 75 into Mooncalf and get back some CP. Kind of up to you how you feel about that. For blue CPs, I am assuming that you have all debuffs in the game. So you have Elkosh, Goose Torx Crusher, and Minor Fracture uh, with this particular setup here. If you don't have those debuffs or you're anticipating lower debuff uptimes, then you can obviously shift some points around. And if you're running Nurn main hand, then you do need to make up that additional penetration as well into piercing. We have 64 into mighty, 37 into piercing, 61 precise strikes, 56 domaturge, 52 into master at arms. Now, if you do need to shift some points into piercing because again, you're running Nurn main hand, sharpened offhand, or you're not anticipating good debuff uptimes, you can drop Mighty down to either 56 or 49. You can drop the Scythe Strikes down to either 56 or 52. You can drop Thaumaturge down to 52 or 48. And you can drop Master at Arms down to 48. That should give you more than enough points to put into Piercing here to make up for that loss in Penetration. Finally, our Red CPs. 81 Ironclad, 61 Thick Skin, and 64 into both Hardy and Elemental Defender. 
This is a very generic approach, which would give you very good mitigation across all pieces of content, no matter what piece of content you're running. But if you want to maximize your mitigation, you will need to ship some red CP points around. So for example, while of Lorcage, you are going to experience more magical damage. You're going to want to take points out of Harding, put them into Elemental Defender and Spell Shield. So just bear that in mind, uh, depending on the content that you're running for that particular raid night. And that is pretty much all of our built information. So now let's go ahead and talk about our rotation and we'll be demonstrating it first on a 6 million dummy and then we'll be doing a 21 million raid dummy parse so you guys can get an idea of the DPS we can pull compared to other classes. So because we're using the Maelstrom Daggers, we do have a little bit of a weird rotation here. So I will just quickly replace this dagger here so you guys can actual cruel flurry set. So when you deal damage with Flurry, your next single target damage over time build to use within 10 seconds gains 2003 spell and weapon damage. So this is just tacked onto the tooltip uh, when you have Cruel Flurry active. So in terms of our single target dot abilities, it's basically Rending Slashes, Rearming Trap, and Poison Injection. We want to make sure to use Rapid Strikes before we use Rending Slashes, before we use Rearming Trap, and before we go to our back bar to do our back bar dot so we can get that off on Poison Injection as well. So that is the complexity of running the Maelstrom rotation, but it is a static rotation, so Stam Slurks do have a static rotation here, so don't necessarily need to worry about having this sort of dynamic rotation or anything like that. So this is a static rotation, don't need to worry about any sort of dynamicism at all. So starting off here uh, with our rotation, ideally you kind of want to pre-buff with Dark Deals, that way you have some stamina regen going, going into the fight, and then you want to open up with uh, Regarming Trap. So I'll just do a quick probably two or three full rotations here uh, so that you guys can get an idea of where it all stands. Um, so again, starting off first with Rearming Trap and Dark Deal. So pre-buff with Dark Deal, lay down Rearming Trap, and cut off with your back bar dots. I will not be using my ultimate. Rapid Strikes, Rending Slashes, Rapid Strikes, Hurricane, Rapid Strikes, Rearming Trap, and then rear Rapid Strikes again. Rapid Strikes, Rending Slashes, Rapid Strikes, Hurricane, Rapid Strikes, Garmin Trap, Rapid Strikes, Back Bar Dots. And every second rotation you'll be doing Dark Deal again, and your front bar pretty much remains exactly the same. So there might be instances where you're going to need to use both Dark Deal and your ultimate at the same time, so you will not have enough time, uh, just basically you're losing a global cooldown uh, on the front bar as a result. In that instance, you can do Rapid Strikes, Hurricane, Rearming Trap, and then Rapid Strikes again into your backward rotation. And that'll be a little bit more apparent when we go through the 21 million dummy parts, because there will be instances where we need to do both Dark Deal and have the Storm Matronach down. So that'll lower the amount of uh, global cooldowns we have on our front bar, and I'll show you uh, how that all ends up playing out. So... Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the 21 million uh, raid dummy parse. So this basically gives us a bunch of raid buffs, so we can basically standardize our parses across different classes. The only class that will need to be adjusted is the Stamina Necromancer, because they do have access to Major Vulnerability, which the other uh, classes do not have access to. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, and do note that we will get the Minor Toughness buff, uh, so we'll be seeing our health go up to a more acceptable level of health here. Um, and I will be trying to narrate throughout the parse, particularly because, again, of that scenario where you might have Dark Deal with the Atronach all at the same time. And Rapid Strikes. And then slashes. So here's an, a good example here. So you do Hurricane, Gummy Trap, right into Flurry. So again, start off with Rapid Strikes, go into Rending Slashes, Hurricane, Rending Trap, and then Rapid Strikes right into your back by rotation here. Now because we have Locastes active on both bars, don't need to necessarily need to worry about uh, which bar you're activating that synergies on. So the general rule of thumb is, when you have 4 seconds left on Endless Hail, so example, 4 seconds left, I do a Hurricane, Rearming Trap, and then Rapid Strikes here. So again, you can see here, I do need to do a Hurricane, 
Probably trap. Here I have 5 seconds so I can do another rapid strikes between trap and my bar swap. So again, 4 seconds left on endless fury, so or endless hail I should say. So I just do hurricane right into Rearming Trap rather than doing a flurry between hurricane and Rearming Trap here. I messed up rotation there. This is what I'm talking about, where you have to do Dark Deal and the Storm Atronach and Poison Injection here. But I already kind of covered what you would do here, so you just do Flurry, Hurricane. You will have a little bit of downtime on your back bar dots that way, unfortunately. You can see here, you can also do two flurries instead if you have enough time to do so. And I'll point out again uh, those instances there where you have that time to do two flurries in a row. It's going to be right here. They can do two flurries in a row here. And then do a hurricane uh, into the rubber trap rather than doing a flurry hurricane, flurry the army trap. Just a couple of options if you uh, want to do that. That's works do not have an execute at all. The rotation is not going to change when we go into execute here. Towards the end of the fight, you can just spam flurry rather than having to do any sort of your dots here. So for example here, I'm just going to spam flurry, not really worry about any of my other dots here because it's towards the end of the fight. So there you have it, that is the stam sort parts here, um, hold, loads in, 84.1k, so really really nice overall, uh, I was a little bit blanking a little bit on the Lekesti because I'm very used to having it on the front bar rather than on both bars, but with Lekestis on both bars, with this particular setup, you are able to use synergies on both bars rather than having to wait to activate a synergy on your front bar uh, if you're running something like Veladreth as your Monster Helm set and then Lekestis as a front bar set. That is one pretty big advantage, I think, of running a Maelstrom build on a Stam Sork here. So, we hear Rapid Strikes with that 21% damage buff is actually really, really nice to have here. Now, one of the downsides is you do not really have any bar space for Whirling Blades, nor do you have any time on your front bar to use Whirling Blades, uh, so you will definitely be losing out uh, that way. Uh, you will not be able to use Whirling Blades at all with this particular build. With the more traditional build that is um, not really centered around using the Maelstrom uh, set here, you could potentially run Whirling Blades and execute to get a little bit more damage that way. Um, but the Maelstrom buff itself more than outweighs the DPS loss that you get from dropping Whirling Blades here. Um, there you have it. That is the Stam Sork build here. If you guys have any questions or comments about the build itself, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Hope you guys found this video informative and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.